Okay, so this is just um, a final review before the Unit 2 Ultimate Test that's coming up very soon. Um, so I'm just going to go through the sample test that was given to students. Hopefully this web uh, tutorial will help. Um, so let's get started. So number one in the sample test was asking students to find 8 squared. So I know we've done a lot of the laws of exponents recently, but in this particular question we're not multiplying 8 to the second power by any other power um, with 8 as the base. We're not dividing, we're not doing uh, any power to the power, so the laws of exponents don't count here. But we need to know how to use exponents in this case. So this is going back to, uh, to some of the early learning of exponents that we have. So 8 squared, we should know now that this is going to equal 8 times itself 2 times. So 8 times 8 is 64. So that was the first question. So hopefully you got that one correct. Um, starting off nice and easy. Okay, the second question is a little trickier because with the second question, we've never really, um, I guess, looked at questions stated in this way before. So for number two, it's an inequality and it says x plus seven is less than or equal to 10. So, you know, we're used to equations and we're used to this having an equal sign right there. Uh, but this time it has an inequality. So we're given a few options A, B, C, D uh, and the question states which value makes this inequality true? Is it A, X is equal, oops, let me go back a little, X is equal to 16? Is it B, that X is equal to 4? Is it C, x is equal to 17, or is it D, that x is equal to 2? So there's a few ways of going about this. Um, one of the ways to do this um, is to solve it. So in solving an inequality like this, it's the same as an equation. We're just trying to get x on its own. So when we have x plus 7 is less than or equal to 10, we could try and solve this by just doing everything that we would do um, if we were solving an equation. So we're dealing with inverse operations. If we're trying to get this x on its own, we've got to do the opposite of adding 7 to it, which is subtract 7. If we just subtract 7 from one side, we must do the same to the other side. So if we subtract 7 from both sides, right here, those 7s disappear. The x does stay here, though. We still have the x left. When we do 10 subtract 7, we end up with 3. Now, be careful. We don't want to put an equal sign here. We still have this inequality, less than or equal to. x must be less than or equal to 3. So the question asked us, which value makes this inequality true? So if x was 16, You've got to think, is 16 less than or equal to 3? Well, 16 is not less than 3. It's not equal to 3, so it can't be A. The next one, B, 4. If x was 4, if we took the x, the, the 4 and substituted it here, is 4 less than or equal to 3? Well, it's not. 4 is more than 3. It's not less than. It's not equal to. So this one also doesn't work. For C x equals 17. Well, if we substitute 17 here, does that make a, a true statement? 17 is less than or equal to 3. Well, it's not less than 3, and it's definitely not equal to 3. So it's not 17. So we've already cancelled out the first three options. So we know it's probably d. Let's just substitute it and check, though. We take our 2, we plug it in. So 2 is less than or equal to 3. Well, it's not equal to 3, but it is less than. So this inequality is true for D, so D would be your answer. The second way to go about this would be to um, actually just keep it as x plus 7 is less than or equal to 10. And instead of substituting uh, your number in and then seeing if it's less than or equal to the 3, we would, for example, take our 4, we'd substitute it in here, and so we'd have 4 
plus 7, which is 11, is less than or equal to 10. And now we would find that this is incorrect, because 11 isn't less than 10, and it's not equal to 10. So that would be how we would cancel out B as our potential answer. And the same with each of the others. And when we would substitute 2 in there, we'd end up with 2 plus 7 is less than or equal to 10. And so that would give us 9 is less than or equal to 10. And so this is true. This is the only true statement. And so this again would tell us that D is in fact our answer. So that was number 2. Let's take a look at number 3. Okay, here we go. I'll just get rid of that. Okay, so number three is asking us to simplify um, 10 to the, let me just write this out, simplify 10 to the negative second power, 10 to the negative two. Now we've been doing a lot of work recently on scientific notation, and that does involve times in a number by 10 to positive and negative exponents. But right here, we're not in fact um, multiplying by 10 to any exponent. We're just um, simplifying this 10 to the negative 2 power. So the method to do this um, that I tell students is to stare right here at this negative sign. You've got to stare at it because we're going to do something with it. And what happens is that this negative sign, you need to pull it out. You need to take it, take it out. And you need to put it as a 1. So you take it out and you turn it around. And you put it as a 1. And so what do you have left after you take that out, turn it around, and put it as a 1? Well, you still have your 10. And you also have the exponent 2, but it's not negative anymore. It's just a 2 on its own. And because this looks a little funny, we need to put a little shelf. So we would end up with 1 over 10 squared. Well, 10 squared is the same as 100. So 1 over 10 squared is the same as 1 hundredth. So some of us will know that 1 hundredth um, is a 1 in the hundredths place. So here we have our 1's place. We have our tenths place and we have our hundredths place. So sometimes we can go straight from this answer to know that this is the same as this decimal. And that's great if we can do that because that's connecting, making another connection in math and um, you know fractions and decimals they're the same. In fact the full name for a decimal is a decimal fraction. Um, so it's important that we understand the connection between these now, if you're a little stuck and you're not sure, and you're looking for 1 over 100 in your ABCD multiple choice and you don't see it, then we've got to figure out, did we make a mistake or can we convert it? So in converting 1 over 100 as a fraction, it's a division problem. And so really what we're doing is 1 divided by 100. And we can try and do things like use... Um, you know, use long division and other stuff, but really when we're dividing by nice numbers or multiplying by nice numbers like tens and hundreds and thousands, it's all to do with moving a decimal point. So in this question, we actually have an invisible decimal point right in front of that one. So any number, even if I said five, really that's a five with an invisible decimal point just in front of it. So because we're dividing in this case one by 100, and 100 has two zeros, what we need to do is we need to move the decimal point two places because of the two zeros. And because there's a division sign, this is how we know that we are moving it to the left because we're making the number smaller. So we had the one and we moved the decimal two places over. And so the next thing that we need to do is put a zero where the scoop was. So our answer is 0 0.01, and often we like to put a zero in front, so 0 0.01. So this would be our final answer for this question, and it is one of the options in our multiple choices, D. Okay, so that was three that we just did. So let's take a look at number four.